This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Prose 1. The Description of Lady Philosophy While I was thus mutely pondering with myself, and recording my sorrowful complainings with my pen, it seemed to me that there appeared above my head a woman of a countenance exceeding venerable. Her eyes were bright as fire, and of a more than human keenness. Her complexion was lively, her vigour showed no trace of enfeeblement, and yet her years were right full, and she plainly seemed not of our age and time. Her stature was difficult to judge. At one moment it exceeded not the common height, at another her forehead seemed to strike the sky, and whenever she raised her head higher, she began to pierce within the very heavens, and to baffle the eyes of them that looked upon her. Her garments were of an imperishable fabric, wrought with the finest threads and of the most delicate workmanship, and these, as her own lips afterwards assured me, she had herself woven with her own hands. The beauty of this vesture had been somewhat tarnished by age and neglect, and wore that dingy look which marble contracts from exposure. On the lowermost edge was inwoven the Greek letter Pi, on the topmost the letter Theta, and between the two were to be seen steps, like a staircase, from the lower to the upper letter. This robe, moreover, had been torn by the hands of violent persons, who had each snatched away what he could clutch. Her right hand held a notebook, in her left she bore a staff, and when she saw the muses of poetry standing by my bedside, dictating the words of my lamentations, she was moved a while to wrath, and her eyes flashed sternly. Who? said she has allowed these play-acting wantons to approach this sick man. These who, so far from giving medicine to heal his malady, even feed it with sweet poison. These it is who kill the rich crop of reason with the barren thorns of passion, who accustom men's minds to disease instead of setting them free. Now, were it some common man whom your allurements were seducing, as is usually your way, I should be less indignant. On such a one I should not have spent my pains for naught, but this is one nurtured in the Eleatic and academic philosophies. No, get you gone, you sirens, whose sweetness lasts not. Leave him for my muses to tend and heal. At these words of upbraiding, the whole band, in deepened sadness, with downcast eyes and blushes that confessed their shame, dolefully left the chamber. But I, because my sight was dimmed with much weeping, and I could not tell who was this woman of such commanding authority, I was dumbfounded, and, with my gaze fastened on the earth, continued silently to await what she might do next. Then she drew near me, and sat on the edge of my couch, and looking into my face, all heavy with grief, and fixed in sadness on the ground, she bewailed in these words the disorder of my mind. Verse 2 Philosophy bewails the perturbation of the mind of Boethius. Alas! In what abyss his mind is plunged! How wildly tossed! Still, still towards the outer night she sinks, her true light lost as oft as, lashed tumultuously by earth-born blasts, cares waves rise high. Yet once he ranged the open heavens, the sun's bright pathway tracked, watched how the cold moon waxed and waned, nor rested till there lacked to his wide ken no star that steers amid the maze of circling spheres. The causes why the blusterous winds vex ocean's tranquil face, whose hand does turn the stable globe, or why his even race from out the ruddy east the sun unto the western waves does run, what is it tempers cunningly the placid hours of spring, so that it blossoms with the rose for earth's engarlanding?
Who loads the year's maturer prime With clustered grapes in autumn time? All this he knew, thus ever strove Deep nature's law to guess. Now, reft of reason's light, he lies, And bonds his neck oppress, While, by the heavy load constrained, His eyes to this dull earth are chained.